In this presentation, I will be focusing on dialogic talk, otherwise known as dialogic teaching. The term was first developed by Robin Alexander throughout the early 2000s. However, the concept of dialogic talk can be traced back to Socrates. Socrates suggested that education practice should be centred on notions of dialogue and that questions should elicit new thinking, not probe for set answers. A teacher and student participated in a question that neither of them knew the answer to, suggesting the process is more important than the outcome. Before Alexander began his research, Vygotsky was driven by a concern for language. He suggests that development has a social process because children learn through social interaction. By communicating and interacting with more knowledgeable and more able people, they gain a better understanding of prior knowledge. This is better known as cognitive scaffolding. Vygotsky linked better language with better thinking or a stronger ability to express what they mean. Children need rich learning environments to exchange and experiment with meanings. Alexander explored Vygotsky's theory further, finding that this form of learning is vital in the development of communicative skills. So, now we have seen the origins of the theory, what actually is dialogic talk? Dialogic talk is a theory that has become increasingly popular in recent years as the discussion continues to grow. The theory discusses the value of talk in the classroom and how it helps develop learner autonomy. It is a teaching method where the teacher encourages and facilitates discussion in order to develop understanding. Developing the theory derived from Socratic methods, it was thought that lecturing alone was not sufficient in encouraging the development of learners and that questioning should be used to extend thinking rather than assess it. Dialogic talk is seen as a vehicle for increasing pupil engagement at a deep level. However, it is an aspect of teaching that must be thoroughly planned for, otherwise the discussion can lose focus. In the next section of the presentation, I'm going to talk about the five key principles of dialogic talk. They are Collective, where students come together in joint learning and inquiry. Reciprocal, where students listen, share and consider the view of others. Supportive, students feel able to express themselves clearly and safely. Cumulative, to build on their own and others' contributions and chain them into a coherent line of thinking. The fifth principle is purpose. The discussion must be structured with specific learning views or outcomes. If these key principles are adhered to in the classroom, students will be able to increase understanding of their prior knowledge. Let's move on to related pedagogy. As I've mentioned already, all discussions of dialogic approaches stem from Vygotsky, as he argued that language is the driving force behind cognitive development. Another key theorist when discussing dialogic talk is Jerome Bruner. He suggests that it is culture, not biology, that shapes human life and the human mind. He builds on Vygotsky's notion, stating, most learning in most settings is a communal activity, the sharing of culture. His research suggests educators have underestimated children's innate predispositions for particular kinds of interaction. The last piece of related pedagogy I would like to discuss is that of Bakhtin, a Russian philosopher of language who discussed the dialogic imagination. He discussed the difference between dialogic talk and monologic talk. Monologic talk is concerned with the transition of knowledge to pupils, where the teacher remains firmly in control of the goals of talk. Whereas, in contrast, dialogic talk focuses on promoting communication through authentic exchanges. What about in schools? The Education Endowment Foundation, EEF for short, conducted a trial researching into the impact that cognitively challenging classroom talk can lead to gains for pupils, English, Maths and Science. They found a positive impact in English for all children in Year 5. It concluded that dialogic teaching made two additional months progress in English and science. Before we move on to criticisms of dialogic talk, I want to briefly touch on how you can assess a structured classroom discussion as it may be difficult to grasp exactly what the students understand from the questions. The first way to assess understanding is through active participation. If a student is participating more than others, you can assume they have a better understanding, although this is not always the case. Dialogic talk gives the opportunity for immediate feedback that can guide the discussion along the right path. Let's move on to the final bit of this presentation, the criticisms of dialogic talk. 
Alro and Scovsmos pointed out that some students will refuse to engage with the method by refusing to communicate with their peers. This could render dialogic talk ineffective for the entire class. Another problem with the theory is that the teacher's voice is the guiding source in the lesson. However, many teachers lack the skills necessary for planning effective whole class dialogues. My Hilm Burns. Dialogic talk must be structured and implemented effectively to have an impact. To conclude this presentation, dialogic talk can be a key tool to developing students' understanding of subject knowledge. With the guidance of the teacher, there is opportunity for students to learn, question and share with each other.